In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some 2.5D tiling texture techniques. Uh, we're going to be focusing, in this video in particular, on controls and placement in the canvas. Uh, so we're going to start actually just by creating a plane. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it a poly mesh, make sure smooth is off, and we're going to divide this so that there's plenty of polygons for us to use for poly painting here. And I've already got a texture loaded. It's just a simple grid just to help inform the placement of my tools. And in the texture map, I'm going to open up texture map and poly paint. And I'm going to say new texture. And I'm just going to grab that that grid. And I'll just say colorize. Uh, make sure MRGB uh, is on. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab a flat color. And I'm going to say poly paint from texture. And now our grid is poly painted onto our plane. So if I start rotating it and then I hold shift, I can constrain it so it's facing the camera. I'm also going to make sure perspective is off. Anytime we start dropping things to the canvas for tiling textures, we're going to want to make sure that's not on. And if I hit F, I'll frame it to my document, which you'll see is already set to 1024 by 1024. Uh, we could be at 2048, but just for demo and performance reasons, I'll be here at, uh, at uh, 1024 by 1024. If we were at 2048 by 2048, we'd probably want to use the anti-alias half size in order to get it to fit on our monitor. But I'll be working at actual 100% here at 1K. So, let's take a look at the layer palette real quick. Here's our layer, uh, our initial layer. If I go ahead and hit T, then I just left edit mode, and I just dropped this plane down to that layer now. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer, because I don't want to work on this one anymore. But we'll talk about v layer visibility here now. So, if I double click on a layer, You'll see the it's now light, that little dark band is gone. That means this layer is not visible. But of course it still is visible, we see it in our document, but that's just because it's selected. If we actually go and select our other layer, you'll see that sort of temporary visibility gets disabled. So if we click on it again, it's visible, but if we click away on another layer, it's gone. So if we want to bring it back permanently and keep that visibility persistent, then we'll double click it and then we can select another layer. So we're ready to start drawing in our tools. I've got just a couple of sort of generic stones. Um, two is enough for the demo. Three or four might be better, but we've got a total of uh, six sides to work with on each of these, so that'll be enough variation at a larger scale. So I'm just going to simply just start dragging this out, but already I did something I didn't want to do. When I drag these out, I'm always going to want to use matte cap white. We'll look at why that's sort of important in the next video when we look at sort of material and render previews. But um, what's good about that, for now, is that I get a sense of what my sort of local color is here. I'm not darkening the material too much like I would with, with um, you know, another material. Actually, if I go back into edit mode here then you can see you know that sort of that local color is coming through but I also have some sense of the form from all the little form shadows and there's some cavity settings here too so I just find this a pleasing material to work with in the canvas so I'll clear that layer and I'll drag it out for real and I'll just kind of place it and sort of roughly fit it into the grid and now we're gonna be going back and forth between move scale and rotate a lot and of course if we look up here we'll see W is the shortcut key for move and we've got E and R for scale and rotate so we're going between those a lot and if we click in the area inside the manipulator here we've got this sort of free transform here with the with the move but if we go to rotate we've sort of also got this free rotation so we're going to be using that a lot to just get little subtle variances um, and if you click on any of these, you can constrain it to an axis. 
but get used to the way the rotation manipulator works because since we held shift in the free roam here or free rotation and then we constrained it we can't necessarily constrain the rotation to either one of these uh, axes but we can rotate it in Z what that means is that if you want to sort of ro if you want to constrain rotation to X you might have to just free rotate it a little bit and then you can constrain to one of these um, axes and then just kind of tilt it back a little bit so a little bit of getting used to but it's it's fine so I'll scale it down just a little bit sort of make sure that it sort of fits nicely in that grid and I'll just quickly just draw out another one and one more the other thing I'm going to do uh, constantly is because I rotated this one so that we're kind of looking down at lengthwise I always want to compare the sort of Z depth of each object relative to the other ones um, I know this one's poking out quite a bit. If we rotate it, that becomes obvious. Uh, so we want to move it back in space because I want just kind of a, um, you know, sort of the front planes of all these stones should roughly be sort of, should occupy the, the same Z depth. So with the move or the rotate manipulator enabled, we can click and drag in an empty part of the canvas and just slide that tool up and down through z-space. So I can kind of fit it to where it needs to be, move it over to another stone, slide it back in space to, to get it to match up, and then I can just drag it around to just double check surrounding areas to make sure everybody's sort of happy and in the same space. And one more time here. And then we get to a situation like this where we've got this gap to fill, um, you know, we, we can't go placing stones, you know, out here and try to eyeball it up. What we can do is we can grab this layer here, back in our layer palette, and we can displace. I know my document is uh, 1024, so I'm going to displace by half. And then, of course, it, it offset and wrapped that layer, and now I've got this space to work with. So I'm going to go back up, Oops. grab my other tool here, make sure Z add and MRGB is on for that tool, and I'm just going to place it into the canvas here. And of course double check its position. So I've got that layer down. Uh, the other thing I can do is I'm going to create another layer. So for this next row, I'm going to start laying my stones down in this new second layer. I'm going to do that because we can actually start offsetting that layer and doing some other things to it once we've set these down in the canvas. The other thing I'm always doing is is I'm trying to find pieces that fit well together, kind of like kind of like Legos. Uh, so maybe you know where one sort of has this sort of the peak that comes up, and another one has this valley they might complement each other really well and sort of fit very nicely and naturally together. So I'll kind of find opportunities to to pick my my pieces wisely and fit them together in a natural way. So I've got that layer done. So now that I've got these two layers, if I wanted to, I can hold the tilde key and I can actually just start offsetting that layer just by clicking and dragging in an empty part of the canvas. Uh, so I can kind of, if I decide I want to move those stones, I can, but I, I liked them where I originally placed them. So I'll undo that. But what I can also do is if I hold Alt tilde, then I can actually s move that layer up and down in Z space. So once I get all my stones laid out, if I wanted to, I can create some variance in height in the rows, I'm kind of at the point now where as I'm placing them, I'm, I'm kind of scanning around the rest of the canvas to see where else am I using this particular stone, uh, this particular side of the stone, and if I am using this side of the stone, what's its orientation, 
because I want to try to avoid as much repetition as I can at this stage so I don't have to rework anything later. Uh, I'm using it, of course, here though, uh, but in you know a different orientation. Uh, but I can still get a little more mileage sort of if I so if I drop it down, I can almost kind of like extend it and make it a slightly different stone at this stage just by kind of maybe finding another piece that might fit well. Well, let's try that. And what I can actually do, as long as they fit well together, I can actually almost like create a new stone out of it just by sort of pushing it through and trying to carefully line it up. Uh, sometimes it, it works um, better than other times, but it's a small variation, but you could do that you know, to the other side as well, but slightly different stone anyway, so you can get a little more mileage out of your tools that way just by kind of jamming them together as you place them.